Good morning, good morning. Welcome to 4x8 Paper Stuff. I'm Beth. I don't say that enough because I forget I have new people here. <laughs> They're like, who's this crazy woman with a glue stick? Who turned her loose? Anyhow, okay, so um, I, I added, <coughs> excuse me, I added three more um, objects to my list here so that I can butt up against what I've already filmed ahead of time, which are a couple days before and a couple days after when I leave. So I came up with a Miwok Indian basket, which the Miwok Indians were all over this part. They were all over. There's several different, there's like coastal Miwok in Maybe mountain Miwoks. I don't. I don't know. The Valley Miwok. There. There's a lot of Miwok tribes. M I W O K. And me growing up right here, we had a Miwok museum. Just getting started as I got to be a little bit older teenager, but I, I got to go to summer camp one one week. I think it was like one or two weeks, and I rode my bike every day out there because it was probably five miles from our house. And my mom didn't drive. So if you wanted to go somewhere, you had to hoof it. If my dad was at work during the day. But I found a picture online of a Miwok Indian basket. And it said it was one. So I hope it is. And I think what I'm going to do is kind of like what I did with the quail. I'll have a solid background. And then maybe represent. I love these birds. And this morning, I could not catch them on camera. But this morning, one of the herons was in the very tip top of a pine tree across the cove and he looked like a Christmas tree star he was at the very top of the branch I'm like he's heavy I mean those things are like 30 pounds or so and because they're big birds up close and I'm like how is he balancing on that little branch at the very top anyhow he was fishing or scouting for a girlfriend I'm not sure which one or maybe both I don't know um if I haven't told you this cove is an activity of <sighs> maternity ward here I mean, and pre-maternity ward. It is, I've never seen, I heard a whippoorwill the other morning. I've never heard one of those in our cove. Or if I have, it's been years. Um, that we have loons that stay here all the time. They used to migrate in and out. Now they stay. Uh, the geese, the same way. We've got geese that have been here for a very long time. They used to, this was on their migration trail. Now they said like, hey, let's stay here all year round. Um the, the osprey are messing around. You can hear them talking to each other. I mean, it's just the herons. It's a wild cove, no pun intended, this this early spring. But anyhow, okay, and here's another shot. Now, this is Sausalito, and this is coming across. San Francisco is on this side right here, and you're coming across the Golden Gate Bridge, and you come up the highways right here, but you can take one or two roads down here now. And this is a very, very affluent area, very. Before it was even known to be affluent, it was affluent. And I mean, cause the houses here are start in double digit millions. And, but there's a, a houseboat community. Now it's very chic. It didn't used to be, but now it's very chic. And then, so that's kind of like, I've been doing everything on this side because Marin's on this side. So, um, I thought, oh, it'd be interesting to have one on this side. And then this is looking from Mount Tamalpais over. You can barely see in the haze. You can't see it on camera. But there's a little bit of San Francisco right there. And then um, this is all up. This is Sausalito right here, which is this. So it's way up on Mount Tamalpais. So, well, that's a different viewpoint. So these are the three I'm going to do. And that'll butt me up against things I've already scheduled and filmed and everything. And this morning I washed the gray out of my hair. You know, what things we have to do. Um, so anyhow, all of this is going to go in my Hobonichi. So I'm through with these. Well, I might leave the map out. No, because where the Sausalito is, is right here at the very end. Now there's Tiburon Belvedere. It didn't used to be called these things. Strawberry, I guess, is right here. Uh, Alto, I don't have a clue. Some of this stuff is labeled wrong on this map because they had like Novato City. No, it's Novato. Um, then they had like San Rafael Town or something like that, like Ross Town. 
No, it's, Diane Feinstein used to live in Ross. Anyhow, little known facts. Um, now she's living in heaven. So anyhow, this Sausalito is right here. And Belvedere is super, Robert Redford used to have a house here. I mean, these are just super, super affluent, affluent. A lady that I used to work with in Corta Madera, which was right here, her husband was a executive for one of the big record companies in the 70s and 80s. And um, they lived out here. And uh, their son was the voice of Linus on one of the TV shows as a little tiny, tiny guy. Anyhow, he would get a res residual check like every year. It was like $4 or something. But anyhow, I mean, just affluent, affluent. Robin Williams lived out here. Super li at times. Um, Huey Lewis at times. Lots and lots of people. Um, ama amazing area. But beautiful homes. So, and then um, the other view is from Mount Temple Pius, which is right here looking across. So I'll leave that out, I think. But all of this stuff is going to go in my Kobanichi, which I'm playing with a little bit this morning here, too. Adding splotches of paint in places. So here we go. Basket. I tried to remember to put these on last night so that they... Oh, if I remember to put it in. I'm going to put it in right here. I took a corner of this, and I think it was like right in here, and blew it up a little bit. This is all on Procreate. Blew it up a little bit and gave it a solid background, kind of like a look of this. I love it. I love it. So this might be more of what I do. Maybe I shouldn't put that stuff in my Hobonichi yet. I might take those same pictures and just pick out tiny little places and make them in, on a background like this and just continue because I'm only halfway through with this. But actually, we just hit the halfway mark. Ignore the dog. So that might be fun. I might not put that stuff in my book yet. And I need a solid piece of paper. Now, this would be great. Oh, actually... This would be great, but it's too close to the colors that we're going to use, so I'm not going to use that. But I'm going to go into my paper stash here, which is right behind me. See if I can't find a piece of paper. Ooh, no. I'm trying to find one that's not busy and not browns or beige and gold. Huh. How about black and white? This is one of my, this was from a Halloween journal. And I just added all the pages in. And then I printed it in black and white. Kind of like that. I can cover up these with some of this. I'm going to use this. We are supposed to get down to freezing tonight. Crazy weather. Crazy, crazy weather. I'm going to try... As much as I've tried to not have a lumpy left, I have a lumpy left. It really doesn't bother me. To me, it adds a little character. And I'm okay with that. I'm still trying to use up glue sticks I brought back from the beach. That were half used in places. And I think that's the last one. I'm going to have to go into brand new bottles. As much as I love this color of turquoise paper, and when I saw, I got this one in Charlotte, and when I saw that, I was like, whoa, but I've covered it up most everywhere. But I can, st I still know it's there. I'll know it's there because of these guys. These were kind of interesting, but. Okay, so now let's just put a piece of paper up here. And I'm going to have a little bit right there. And I'm okay with that. I, I do want to remember that this was a turquoise journal. Okay. That looks awesome. Now, do I do an oval? I guess I do. 
I'm going to use this piece of paper. I have wanted to use this for so long. This was paper that I um, eco dyed. And it's, I had a bunch of them that I did, but it's the last one. And this kind of looks like a weathered indigenous people's basket. And I've been hoarding it, but let's use it right there. Yep. Today I'm cutting fabric. I want to have all my pieces cut for the two quilts I know I want to make. Do I finish them? I don't know. Oh, I'm going to take a black stabilo right now and go around that and let it be drying. Maybe brown, actually, maybe brown. My shoe just came off. <laughs> Trials and tribulations. Oh, yeah, so I'm cutting fabric today. Which, that way I don't have to do all that part when I get there. Because that takes a while. At least for me it does. Oh, I like that. Do I get it wet? Yeah. And I have it separated. Like, I have two and a half quilts that I want to make. Why half, you say? Because <laughs> half... Oh, let's just do this. One piece is a what they call a panel, and it's a Halloween thing, and um, it has a skeleton. And one of the girls bought it for me like two years ago, because we could at that time they had this bin that you as much as you could get in a bag, like a grocery sack, you could get for ten dollars. And she saw this panel of a skeleton and in Halloween fabric, and she's like, "I'm gonna try to get this in my bag," and she did. Now, I have to think about this for, I don't want it to be, I still want it to be abstract. I thought about this long and hard because how do I define it that it's a basket? Maybe I just pick out one piece. I might try to pick out the bird just because the birds are so wild here this year and put it in the middle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. But anyhow, so so the panel, I'm just going to attach fabric around the edges, some Halloween fabric that I possibly have a few things in my stash that are Halloween. And, um, oh, see? And so I'm just going to sew, sew those around the edge and make, make it like a large throw. Oh, my goodness. Okay, got to get off some perfect edges. No perfect edges allowed. But, uh, and then another one is out of indigo that is going to be pieced pieces that turn into an oval. Um, and then you just repeat that same pattern, that same block. And the blocks are like 18 inches long and maybe nine inches wide, something like that. And the indigo, um, the lady that we went on the Vietnam trip with it, um, had a pattern, but I did not like it. But the ovals spoke to me in another, in this company, in Missouri Stars Patterns. And she did hers in an X and an oval. Oh, dear. And I said, I'm just going to pick the oval part out and do that for my indigo. Because it reminds me of my mouth hanging open. And my mouth was hanging open the whole way through Vietnam. I see... There are two pieces of paper here. I love this. This was in my stash from probably four years ago. This is something I made on Procreate this this month, maybe. I don't know what my husband's doing, but he's banging the front door a lot. I'm sure it has to do with a certain little child, a furry child. Um, now, it really has a deep, dark brown Uh like the pine needles or whatever this is made out of. Grasses. I know I have a deep brown in here. My neocolor twos. We're just going to stick with this. 
What is this? This is green. Raw umber. Ooh, maybe I want to use these two. So I'm just going to go around this guy the same way we've been doing. But then my other one is a star quilt, which I'm not... I love the traditional patterns, but I like them done in bright colors. Not the traditional vintage replications of other fabrics from long ago. I just, I'm a bright person. And not in a smart way, but in a color way. Um, but I'm going to read, there's like a whole panel of a bunch of color family on this side. And then you have like four big stars down the diagonally down the center. Then you have like warms on this side, the stars and cools on this side. So I'm doing K Facet, who's my favorite fabric designer, because he kind of likes the same color families I do. And any of his fabric from 20 years ago, 30 years ago goes with stuff he made this year. And he's not going to be around too much. I mean, he's in his eighties. So, um, but you just piece a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of squares. And then you do the stars. I'm doing the stars in gray, a really faint gray, kind of like a grungy gray. And then on this side, the cool colors. And it makes a large, large throw. I really love this. Maybe I add like dots around here for the flowers. Just a little bit. But the fact that this paper was eco dyed and gives it some some grunge it's all torn up and weathered and then this guy goes on top i'm really i love this i'm i'm really thinking this is how i kind of want to live life <laughs> i don't know but again super easy if you already have a stash built up and I could have <clears throat> done, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mimic these dots, kind of like uh, buttons on a pillow or something. And each corner here. So those are the three quilts I have planned. Now, when you go to an entire town filled with fabric, literally, every every little old store is a fabric category. You sometimes get sidetracked by other patterns. <laughs> Last year I was really good. I stuck with what I um, brought. And then I brought home a little bit of fabric, not much. Because I'm trying to, same thing I'm doing here, I'm trying to cull what I... I know what I like. I don't buy for color anymore. I buy for projects. I used to buy because, oh, this is a gorgeous color. I love this. So simple. And this is all me. This is my journal photographed, which I think it was the Hall yeah, it's a Halloween one from maybe 2023, I think. And then, which was all about Agatha Christie, a book. And they're on here. I'm trying to categorize things in playlists. So look under Halloween. Hopefully it's there. Um, what is my husband doing? In, out, in, out, in, out. Oh, they're going for a walk now. Okay. So I, I took a picture of each spread and made a color uh, on Procreate and then stuck them all together and then photocopied that in black and white, printed it in black and white. And then this is eco dyed. That's something I did on Procreate and voila, love it, love it. It's that simple people. So tomorrow I put all my blues and greens away. Hmm. But you know, there's tons of houses here. There's a, this is called, what is this called? Bridge. Bridgewater Boulevard. Hmm. It's the main drag through Sausalito. I can't remember. Bridge. Anyhow. 
um, that's the main street, and then all these little streets feather up into the hills around it. And the houseboats, I guess, might be up here a little bit. Like in the movie, was it You've Got Mail, where he lived in that boat up in Seattle? That's like what these are, but they're gorgeous houses, gorgeous. Oh. So I think I could do like a shape of this and then add blue over here. And obviously I'm not going to put every house down here, but I might put squares in a couple places and then maybe pokey things for the bridge. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. This is really cool. This has been so much. And I think I'm going to continue when I get back from Missouri, continue this, but take maybe... My thought process is to take like this piece right here, like right here, and repeat that with a background, a solid background, smaller, and see what happens. It's all an experiment and all fun. Ooh, this is buckling big time. Okay, it is what it is. All right, thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow and we'll go to Sausalito. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.